Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a great day. You'll notice in the bottom left hand corner we are now on Minecraft version 1.14.1 which was released just yesterday and it's time to update the Survival Guide world. All I need to do is go into single player, I've made a backup on my hard drive so I'm just going to click I know what I'm doing and we'll load up the world in version 0.1. Now version 0.1 of the 1.14 update has introduced a bunch of bug fixes so hopefully for a start we should have fewer issues with chunk rendering and as we can probably see by looking out the window of the farmhouse here things are looking like they are loading well in the distance. I'm just going to take a quick fly around but I have loaded this world up in the pre-release versions and yes oh it's good to have chunk loading back and not looking all glitchy and bugged out fantastic great stuff oh it feels like we're coming like we're, we're, we're coming home again at this stage it feels like the world is actually here instead of you know being half here and all bugged out amazing great stuff thank you moyang for <laughs> fixing that particular problem and i'm so happy that now we can we can see the rest of our world even without having optifine for this version yet it is loading pretty well so that is great to see and finally, we can start getting on with the usual business of planning these episodes. And the thing I want to work on today is this. Not the kelp farm itself, because as you will see in a moment or two, this is still working swimmingly. But I want to work on a means of smelting, or at least cooking, all of this kelp. I'm not sure if it counts as smelting technically, if you're cooking it as food. But we have a large amount of kelp stored up in here. In fact, we have several double chests worth of kelp all in this big stack. And all of that can be turned into dried kelp, which can then be turned into kelp blocks, which can be used to build with as fuel, or even if you wanted to keep some of the dried kelp around as a tasty snack. And I think the ideal thing to do this is a smoker. The smokers that have been added in Minecraft 1.14 are specifically used for food. And while that isn't normally such a big concern when it comes to kelp, because kelp is a food stuff, you can actually smelt the kelp twice as fast, meaning you will get those access to those fuel blocks twice as fast as well. So I think what we're going to do today is add another section to this. We're going to ultimately turn this into a ship build. As uh, I've mentioned in a couple of episodes previously, I kind of wanted to do that sooner but I got a little bit sidetracked with other projects but I think we're going to turn this into something approximating like a Chinese junk style ship with those kind of sails that fan outwards at different angles and we're going to turn the front part of it here into a super smoker <laughs> rather than a super smelter because that will be able to process all of the kelp as it comes in and it's going to be ideal to have a whole bunch of kelp coming out of here so that we can use that as fuel elsewhere. So to start with, we're going to need to make a few smokers. I may as well make eight of them because that's a nice neat number to get with the furnaces. And we'll need some logs from somewhere. Let's go with some spruce logs because they're nice and easy to farm. Let's see if we can wrap those around. There we go. Eight smokers. Though those are going to be the ones that process all of the kelp coming through here twice as fast as furnaces would. I suppose you could also put 16 furnaces in here, but that seems like overkill when you can do the job with eight smokers. I got my redstone box so that we can set up a minecart track and some hoppers to distribute the fuel evenly amongst the smokers. And we'll also need some building materials so that we can build out that ship a little bit more. And I will probably bring some spruce logs and maybe some dark oak logs as well. I think we're going to have to work on the the design of the ship separately from today's episode. Uh, I think I'll probably work on it a little bit this week though because it's going to look really nice to actually have that built up into a ship, especially now that chunk rendering is fixed and I can see it from a distance. <laughs> to begin with though, we're definitely going to have to block off an area of the water here and make sure the inside is completely dry because we won't be able to place redstone components, rails, minecarts, that kind of stuff if this area is completely covered in water still. So we'll have to design a little bit of the boat today and for that I think we're going to go to a time lapse.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and I had to cut the time lapse short because I basically run out of spruce wood. This entire thing, the hull is mostly made out of spruce wood. I've got a, a sort of, I guess the rail. I'm not sure quite what kind of rail this is. I'm not really a ship kind of builder typically, but um, I, I really like the way this came out. I think it's looking great and it's going to be a great venue for our super smoker, especially once we clear out this area down here but yeah i <laughs> i've i've not really built anything quite like this before and it took so much spruce wood to build just this half of the hull and it's not entirely filled in i did kind of want to make this a shipwreck initially and it kind of feels like there is more ship than wreck here i think but i did want to leave myself a little bit of room to you know mess this place up a bit afterwards i just need to get a handle on exactly how much space we're going to need for our super smoker to start with i think we're going to try using scaffolding to plug up different areas of this and then use sponges on them because i have a feeling if we uh, if we close up some of this area with scaffolding and then use sponge, it's not going to flood again afterwards. So scaffolding would actually make for quite a good, like, easy to erect barrier between the waterlogged areas and this area here that we want to dry out. So I'm going to try using scaffolding in this way. We're going to grab some sponges and then see how we get on. And I tell you what, having the chunk rendering actually work <laughs> is so nice. It's like playing Minecraft again. I can't believe it. Okay, so I've got 20 sponges. I think that should be plenty for what we want to do here. I think I'm going to bisect this room like so. And i got to say, placing scaffolding is quite a convenient thing to do. So I'm pretty certain this is going to work out. I just need to make sure I'm looking at the side of these blocks in order to place it up to the ceiling here. And scaffolding can be waterlogged much like other non-solid blocks like this, but it's uh, it's perfectly possible, I think, to clear out the water from this area using the scaffolding. So let's make a couple more towers of this and we should be fine. And if my hunch is correct, this scaffolding should allow us to section off these areas of the room. So let's try a sponge there, one there, one there, one there. And it's sort of working. Yep, yeah, nope, that looks like it's doing okay. And there we go. The scaffolding has actually managed to keep the water from flooding out into different areas of this room. Fantastic. I do need to do a little bit of cleanup here. And that has actually gone really well. So welcome to the new meta for uh, <laughs> clearing out underwater areas. Scaffolding works quite well for this. It's something that you can place from the bottom up as well as from the top down. I really think this could be very, very useful for clearing out stuff like ocean monuments or rivers like we did with the squid farm before. So give it a try. Give scaffolding a go for this application. You never know. And let's try a single sponge, say there. Yep, that's <laughs> done a decent amount. Let's clear out this section and this section. Wonderful. Just a few more sponges to place. Gosh, it's a little bit laggy, <laughs> but I think... I think we can get it cleared out. Just a couple more sponges left to smelt. And luckily, just across from the boat, I've got this potions lab, which has a couple of handy furnaces in that I can use to smelt up the sponge. So I think we should be able to clear this section of the boat out and we'll be able to start building our super smoker. So now with this area completely cleared out of water, all we need to do is <laughs> the joyful task of taking down the scaffolding. That noise. It's just so fun. <laughs> I like that a lot. All right. Uh, we have a couple of areas that are still open to the water, but spots like this are actually going to stay relatively clear of water. It's not going to flow in from the outside because it's got an empty block down there to flow into. And the rest of it is safely contained behind this scaffold over here. So let's clear out some dirt from this area and let's clear out an area that we're going to build our super smoker. The only real prerequisite of this is that the output is probably going to come from that chest over there. We could rearrange that if we wanted to, but realistically we just have to put a minecart with a hopper underneath there. It's going to drain the contents of the chest and then it can take it around the whole smoking setup. Here is my next question. Can you put rails on top of scaffolding? Oh, you can. Okay, so that might be a kind of volatile way of setting this whole thing up because, of course, if you break one piece of scaffolding, you're potentially breaking a lot of rails. But 
Scaffolding would make a really good material for building roller coasters, wouldn't it? Like, you can clearly see how this would be the perfect framework for a wooden roller coaster. Where normally you've used fences and stuff in the past, just having, like, huge sections of this made out of, like, <laughs> made out of scaffolding, putting rails on all of those. Yeah, that could look really great. Okay, sidebar over, because I'm not going to use scaffolding as the material to run the rails for the minecart in here, but... Just a thought, because I saw that in the background and I immediately thought wooden coaster. So we should give that a try sometime. But I think what I'm probably going to do is grab a few extra supplies. I'm not going to use any more of the wood because I really want to save that for the rest of the boat here. And we're going to set up a nice easy path for the minecart track to go on. We're probably not going to make this look too fancy inside of here for now. We can always swap out some of the materials later. The point for the moment is to make it functional. And to do that, of course, all we need to do is grab some hoppers, the eight smokers, and set up a minecart rail that runs along the hoppers and distributes the items much like it does in our existing super smelter. Okay, so I'm about ready to build this thing, and I figured out a circuit in my creative test world that's going to allow us to have a hopper minecart fill up on the contents of this chest. Once it's as full as it can be, it gets released into a system that's going to divert it around the eight smokers, and then it's only going to be put back into position once it's finished getting rid of all of the contents that it picked up along the way. And how we're gonna do this is actually kind of a neat little circuit. So the first thing we need to do is get an angled detector rail in here. See, it's fine building rails up to this point here, for example, but then we can't get an angled rail here without taking out this glass block, putting a rail there, and then adding in a detector rail like so. Now we can take out that rail at the top there and add the glass block back in, which I'll probably have to do with scaffolding up to it first. See if I can pick that up through the side. There we go. Pop the glass block back in, and we have ourselves a sloping rail. Now, detector rails are something we haven't covered all that much because there are very few uses for them, or there are lots of uses for them, but I haven't really found anything to demonstrate them until now. Basically, detector rails allow you to detect whether or not a minecart is sat on them, and in combination with a comparator, you can detect whether or not a hopper minecart has contents. So what we're going to do is pop a comparator basically on that block there, detecting the contents of this, and we're going to place a fence gate in front of it to stop the hopper minecart from falling out into the system. So this is going to potentially take a little bit of rejigging of the chests up here to make it work now that I come to think of it, but hopefully we should be able to get this in action. Yeah, it seems like what we're going to have to do is limit it to a single chest here that delivers the contents to the hopper minecart, which means it's going to get messy in here. <laughs> I need to get all of this kelp and stuff out of the way, but what that means is we can place the fence gate here, and that is kind of paramount to the way this circuit functions. There are definitely other versions of this, by the way, so if this doesn't suit your needs if you're building this at home, you can always give it another one a try. Just look up minecart or hopper minecart loading and unloading systems and you'll probably find something pretty similar to this, if not genuinely better. So by placing a comparator on this block here, it's going to detect that the hopper minecart is in place and it's going to start to emit a variable signal depending on how much the hopper minecart has in its inventory. So it's going to reach full signal when the hopper minecart is completely full. It's going to reach kind of halfway when it's halfway full. You know, you get the idea. That's how a comparator works. <laughs> you guys don't need to know this at this point. What you do need to know is that the longer the signal along here, we can actually fill up the hopper minecart to that amount. So let's switch this back about there. So here we've got seven pieces of redstone dust linking the comparator to this block here right next to the fence gate. And what that basically allows us to do is have the fence gate open when the hopper minecart is just less than half full of kelp and it's going to release it to go down this ramp here. At the bottom of the ramp, it's going to go to the left over a powered rail and then go around the circuit that will contain our four smokers. Now, obviously, we're going to allow an area around the outside for them to be fueled as well. I'm not sure what we're going to use as fuel yet, but we'll probably just grab some coal or something until this thing can become a self-sustaining facility. And as you can see right now, the track is curving towards the powered rail that we've already placed. Now, if I complete the circuit around the outside, filling in the smokers and the hoppers, you're going to get something that looks like this. These rails will, of course, be powered. We'll probably just chuck a couple of redstone blocks over the top of there to power it. Don't need to be 
skimpy with the redstone at this point, like there and there. Those are the ideal positions for those, by the way, because we're going to be running a second redstone circuit down the center here. And this is the most important part of this whole circuit because we're going to pop a detector rail there that is going to detect how full the minecart is as it travels around the rest of the circuit. And using that, we're going to be able to compare the redstone signal using another comparator and we're going to switch the direction of this track meaning that if it's still got contents this track is going to change position it's going to connect to this rail here and it's going to continue the minecart traveling around the circuit and to switch the direction of the curve this track here needs to be powered using a redstone torch or in fact the redstone torch switching on and off is going to flick the direction of the track backwards and forwards. By the way, I love that we can crouch under a one and a half block space now. It makes this so much easier to do with the way I've built the deck. So what we're going to do is place a redstone comparator detecting what's happening on this block here. We're going to set a redstone repeater here to four ticks like so. And then we're going to have a couple of pieces of redstone dust coming out of here. One there and one there. Otherwise, this repeater wouldn't feed out into anything. Now that's going to go down into this block here. The redstone current is going to travel onto that block and that is the block that currently has our redstone torch attached to it if I've done that right which I'm pretty certain I have. Yeah looks like I've done that right. Okay great. So each time the minecart goes around here this is going to detect whether or not it has any contents whatsoever and if it does it's going to flip that track connecting these two pieces of powered rail here and allowing it to continue around the circuit. I will need to grab something to power this. I'm thinking probably just a lever will do. There we go, just a lever attached to the side of that and we're good to go. Now all we need to do is give this a test. It's going to be carrying all of the kelp around to the smokers and hopefully they should be able to output it fast enough that it's not going to be a big problem for the, the input being pretty much constant. But then what this means is once the entire farm is drained of kelp, once all of this backlog of kelp is all smelted up, it's been smoked to perfection, then it will basically just keep the minecart there on hold until it builds up enough contents to be able to go around the system and cook a little bit more. And then the outputs of the smokers are going to end up in these two double chests for the moment until I think of something any better. And yeah, I think we'll just grab some coal to put in the smokers and I think we're ready to give this thing a test. Okay, all we need to do now is put the minecart hopper in place and you'll notice the bottom half of the fence gate hitbox is currently keeping it in place as it fills up with items. But once it's filled up enough, the fence gate releases and as you can see, the delay on that repeater is causing this track to flip at exactly the right time to propel it around the circuit until it runs out of content. So it's delivering eight pieces of kelp per rotation. So it's gonna take a little while to clear itself, but once it gets completely empty, it's going to return back to the station up here where it's gonna start getting more items. There we go, it's come into rest. The fence gate won't open until it's filled up with about halfway here. It should get about, yep, there we go, 17 and then it's off. Fantastic. This has worked out pretty well. Obviously, it's not the most efficient system for dividing up the kelp among these smokers, but hopefully the smokers should be smelting the kelp nice and quickly. Looks like they're filling up a lot faster than they are actually getting the kelp out, but that's 100% fine. We've already got nearly a full stack of kelp in each of these chests, it looks like. That's not too bad. Check that all of the smokers are filling up over here nicely. Looks like they are. Wonderful. Okay, so that is a complete super smoker for our kelp system here, and that is going to be running just about any time we want it to. Of course, we have to get a fuel input line, but that's nice and simple. That's just going to be a manual minecart chest type of affair. This thing fills up so fast. It's great, and hopefully we should be able to smelt a whole bunch of this and then feed the kelp fuel blocks back into the system, and it will never be short of stuff to smelt. That's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, folks. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the build and the redstone components. I'm trying to do a little bit of a little bit of everything in this series here and there, so I hope you did enjoy. If you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to leave a like on it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.